How do you make a beautiful meringue that's either plant-based or egg-based? Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at the difference between Versa Whip and pasteurized egg white powder and how to make an amazing Snickers-type bar. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you recipes that are easily doable in your own kitchen. And this week, we are going to be talking about egg white powder versus Versa Whip. And if you don't know what Versa Whip is, uh, Scott's going to explain it to you. And so we're going to talk about kind of how you use these two kind of very different products in very similar ways, specifically making meringues, and I'm going to let Scott tell you the rest so I don't steal his thunder. <laughs> so remember, um, if you stick around, you can enter to win this week's giveaway, which is either a bag of egg white powder or a bag of Versa Whip, depending on what your preference. So remember, stay tuned and you'll find out how to win. All right, I think maybe where we'll start, Scott, is um, obviously egg white powder, pretty self-explanatory. But what is Versa Whip? So Versa Whip is actually a protein from soybeans, and it allows you to whip any liquid in a similar way to a meringue. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can't really do with any other foaming agent. Yeah, and it's a question that we get here a lot in the test kitchen, which is, um, I want to substitute eggs in one way or yeah. another. How do I do it? Which is kind of why we recommend people do Versa Whip, but there's a lot of confusion about how do you use it? Is it like a one-to-one -to, -one to an egg white? So we decided we'll do an episode around how exactly do you make meringues using both and what else can you do with them? So why don't we start with the meringues maybe and talk about um, what's happening when you make a meringue with egg white powder versus with Versa Whip. So the same thing will happen. <laughs> the egg white powder will be mixed into water as well as the Versa Whip will be mixed into water. Mm -hmm. They will whip up and they will make a meringue. Now the egg white powder will have a slight flavor because it's eggs mm -hmm. and the Versa Whip will be very neutral. Uh, that's where other flavorings, vanilla, whatever it is that you're going to put in there, comes in there. Okay. If you want to make it stable so that you can then, you know, pipe it out onto uh, a silk pad and dry them and make a beautiful meringue cookie, you may need a few other things because it doesn't have the same protein okay. that is in eggs. The protein that is in eggs will then coagulate uh, when it's heated and it will set really beautifully. First Whip doesn't have that. Okay. So you may need a little bit of extra added boost to make it... Uh, you know, set and, and hold its shape for a longer period of time. Yeah, and of these two meringues, they, they're both beautiful looking. Which one is egg white and which one is Versa Whip? So actually the one on the left is the egg white powder that's okay. made into meringues. You can see they're slightly yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be very difficult to tell on camera. Uh, and there's a, s a little bit more gloss to it. Mm -hmm. the, the ones made with Versa Whip are mm -hmm. actually a lighter, uh, crispier texture. I prefer the ones made with Versa Whip yeah. just because uh, the egg white powder sometimes when you eat the, uh, the meringue they can get a little bit tacky mm -hmm. whereas the Versa Whip ones almost like melt completely in your mouth. They're really nice. Yeah, it's uh, this one's definitely lighter. You can kind of, it's hard to tell because they're both meringues but like this one is kind of lighter. It's fluffier. Yeah. Um, and I think I just want to point out really quickly that Versa Whip is a soy product so if you do have a soy allergy, mm -hmm. um, just FYI on that and you know, I'm sure there are people out there who are like, hey, you know what, I can just use a fresh egg white. Like, why do I want egg white powder? So egg white powder is great so you don't have to waste any of the mm. yolks. That's, that's the number one uh, reason you this would use egg white powder. Um, so you're not going to end up wasting any of the yolks. Mm -hmm. Egg white powder is also good to add to regular egg whites. It mm -hmm. boosts that amount of protein so you get a, a firmer yeah. texture. If you're making a, a meringue pie or something like that, mm -hmm. then you can use that to you know, increase the protein, increase the stability of regular egg whites. So there's a million uses for it and they're all good. Uh, but Obviously, I like Versa Whip for certain things as well. Yeah, so the, uh, the Versa Whip meringue like, actually tasted way lighter, so I, yeah. I actually prefer it too. Um, and just to add on to what Scott said, one other benefit of the pasteurized egg white powder is that it is pasteurized. Oh, pasteurized yes. It's food safe, um, you know, as opposed to a fresh one, you're always kind of possibly running that risk of um, mm -hmm. salmonella. Salmonella. Yes. Right. So um, but we wanted to take it a step <laughs> further because we did this last year. It was delicious, but we wanted to do something else. What else did you do, Scott? So we, we started thinking about what things can be whipped and what things can mm -hmm. be, uh, uh, you know, 
transformed, but plant-based. Plant-based is always fun to kind of play around with mm -hmm. and test and see what we can actually do. So we thought of a meringue, and then we thought of taking that meringue and we took it and we made it a nougat out of it. But and what's a nougat? Yeah, <laughs> like what, what is a nougat? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of us just think it's the fluffy thing that's in candy bars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's actually, it's very similar to a marshmallow. So you make a meringue, you add a hot sugar to it, uh, and then you're going to actually add a second sugar. That sugar can be in a traditional uh, nougat, it'll be honey, but honey isn't plant-based. So we went with uh, agave nectar and we were able actually to make a plant-based nougat okay. using VersaWhip. So it's really cool that you can get the same thing and then we took it and we went a step further mm -hmm. and we made uh, a plant-based uh, Snickers style candy bar. Ooh, we have to say Snickers style. <laughs> um, all right, is that what's, what we're plating here today? Yeah, so okay. I'm gonna get into the demo of uh, the first thing. So I'm going to be making a whip here. It's going to be very simple. We can show it. It's going to be water. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Versa Whip, about 1% to the total weight of the recipe. Mm -hmm. Then uh, perfected xanthan gum works really well with helping hold on to that uh, that lift, especially mm -hmm. when you're drying it or adding it to other things. And then we have some uh, vegan gelatin. So the reason why I add all these ingredients is that I want the extra lift, better structure from the, uh, you know, the Versa Whip's great, a little bit better structure with the uh, xanthan gum, and then the vegan gelatin. When I add the hot sugar, it's going to set that okay. vegan gelatin. It's really gonna hold on to that beautiful texture. So I'm gonna get this going. So I'm going to tell you a little bit, once I get this whipped up, that'll be fine. But Janie, if you want to try this little piece of, of the Snickers bar, okay. Snickers style bar. Um, oh. <laughs> so on the bottom, you have the nougat, and then we made a, a plant-based caramel on top. And depending mm -hmm. on how hard, you know, you can kind of tailor this to the way. Sometimes Snickers are, are a little too soft, so if you want them to be a little bit chewier, you can cook the sugar more, so you can kind of gear mm -hmm. them towards what you want. Also, inside the nougat, oh, yeah. you want to add a little bit of uh, like peanut flavor, so you can either do almond, flour, which we're doing today, you could actually use peanut Whoops. butter powder mm -hmm. inside the nougat. So you can do all sorts of fun things mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, kind of gear these towards what you want to do. This is really nice. Like actually, it's a little, it's like less sweet than a traditional Snickers yeah. bar, which I, I prefer. I think a regular Snickers bar is way too sweet. So awesome. I like this. This is super nice. Take a Snickers to task today. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it really depends on what you are trying to do, mm. but it's very simple. As you can see, this is foaming up beautifully already. So I'm gonna give this a few whips. Mm -hmm. And we can see, I can take it out just to show the camera. Okay. A little bit sticky up there. So it's starting to whip up, it's at soft peak, so I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. Right. And then I'm going to add my first sugar, which is just uh, a white sugar and that's this been is cooked. Oh, sorry, I did Go not ahead. mean to interrupt. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, isn't that similar to how you make meringues, too? Yeah, so that's what we're actually doing right now is we're making a, a meringue. And then the added uh, agave at the end will be the second part that will then make it a nougat. Okay. You'll see it knock down some of those bubbles and make a, a nice tacky texture. Yeah. Now, with the nougat, you can place it onto, like, a, a silicone mat or anything like that to just be able to rip it off and, you know, cut it, layer mm -hmm. it, do whatever you want. We like to put it into silicone molds and then put the caramel and nuts right on top of it. Mm. So we're getting a better whip out of this now. I'm gonna give it a little high speed. Okay. Just so we can get it closer to that. And one thing that's great about this is if you over whip egg whites, the, uh, the proteins will tighten too much and then they will separate. Mm -hmm. And you can get like gritty um, separated egg whites. Versa whip, you can whip it all day, all night, and it's never going to separate out of it. It's a really nice product. Cool. So. I'm going to put this on, on low. Mm -hmm. And my first, let's see, agave. So we have a little bit of sugar here that I'm going to pour in. So this is heated to 100 uh, or 302 degrees. So I'm just going to slowly put it in. This also has a little bit of um, glucose powder in it so it doesn't crystallize. Okay. So especially if it's going to be sitting as a nougat, you won't get like a crunchy nougat. Mm. So as I add it in, the heat from the sugar is then going to cook and heat up the, uh, the vegan gelatin mm -hmm. so that when it sets, it will uh, set in a really beautiful texture. Yeah, so, so the vegan gelatin requires heating, but the Versa Whip doesn't. Correct, yeah. The vegan gelatin is the only thing that requires heating of this. Mm -hmm. 
So as I go, slowly increase the speed just to keep that whip really beautiful. Okay. Yep. And do you recommend that the sugar is heated to that temperature specifically? Should they get a candy thermometer going? Yeah, so you have, you have to heat it to a specific temperature to get the okay. specific texture out of the sugar. Mm -hmm. So this was heated to 302. Yeah. And this recipe will be in, in the link in the description below. So yep. you can definitely get this anytime. Yep. Ooh. So I'm going to let this sit. You can see it, there's some nice volume to it. I can't stop it at this moment or else it'll just dissipate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let this go. And then I have my agave nectar mm -hmm. that was heated to 260 degrees. So different, se different temperature because you don't want this one to uh, be heated too much. This will then allow this for a, a stickier texture. If this okay. was heated to 302 degrees, mm -hmm. this would be a crunchy nougat. You wouldn't okay. really be able to get that nice texture, but the lower texture or the lower temperature of this sugar will then make for a better texture. Okay. So I add in this. Before I added the agave nectar, I could have taken this out, piped it, and made some really beautiful meringues. Mm -hmm. The sugar's got a little bit caramelized because they held at around 302, but that's perfectly fine. Caramelization is going to add more flavor to our, mm -hmm. our uh, candy bar at the end. So the texture on this is beautiful. So I'm going to take this yes. just to show you. Oh, that's it's so gorgeous nice. I like the color in here right now. Yeah, I think it's that's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. add in my almond uh, flour. So just super fine almond flour. If you want a little bit more uh, depth of flavor, you can get the... Uh, the organic almond flour if you wanted to at the store you can because that has all the uh, the hull or the, the skin on it that gives a little bit different flavor okay. so I'm just gonna whip this up yeah. the more you whip it the more air you're going to get but do mm -hmm. know that eventually it will cool down and it will set so you okay. want to get it out of there before it sets or else right. your your uh, your whisk is going to be stuck in there mm. but you can see just how beautiful that is and when it cools down, it's going to be nice and chewy for the bottom of your candy bar. Ooh. So we have that all set. And the last thing we're going to do is we have these kind of naked candy bars sitting here. And we have some tempered chocolate that we tempered right before the shoot. And if you place them over just a little rack, this here is the steak decorator from Booker and Dax, but you can absolutely let's start at the front. You just Pour that chocolate right over the top. Mm. A little bit of chocolate on the bottom and let them set and you have a perfect little candy bar. And that looks so good. I think, I feel like pouring chocolate over things is very satisfying. Yes. So as Scott is finishing pouring, I'm gonna talk about this week's giveaway. So if you want to win this week's giveaway, Sometime in the next two weeks, just leave a comment in the video comment section below and tell us something that you would like to see a side-by-side -side demo of regular and plant-based because we like doing these. People have asked for them and I think it's a wonderful way to just offer options to do great recipes uh, regardless of what your dietary preference is. So I think I just said preference really weird, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, leave your comment below. Tell us what you want to see in terms of regular versus plant-based and we and if we pick you maybe we'll do a whole video about okay, it yeah. in the future which will just be like super that. fun all right so here are some wonderful chocolate bars and yeah, i know so i feel like someone was going to ask but once you make that and it cools you cannot like reheat it and and reliquify uh, it. no if you yeah, reheat yeah. it then it is going to just lose all of its air okay so this is whipped up beautifully you can see that gorgeous ribbon stage we're at right now mm -hmm. but if you cool it then you can cut it these are obviously going to come together but that's what a cooled one looks like so you can then have that uh to play around with and if you wanted to you get a little bit of rice paper and you stick it on the top and bottom and you can not have them stick to your fingers so oh. lots of fun things you can do with nougat and not a lot of people know how to make it so. yeah so that's super fun you can do them both ways and you can do them either with you know versa whip or with egg white powder mm -hmm. So you can get these recipes on today's, on our blog, blog.modernistpantry.com. And if you do use it, tag us on social media at Modernist Pantry. We love hearing from you. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video.
To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>